Now let's keep it simple. One, two, talking tricky. Let's take a look at it. Okay. So now, in beat one, we strum from the fifth string and hold down C chord. count. So let's do it. Get ahead of yourself now. One, two, three, four, one. See, it's just that little, little subtleties of movement on beat too, I think the thickest. very accurate with the right hand to go open first fret second fret now this is a double stop two strings at a time string three and two trill see all the notes i'm getting out of one pick This is the part where you really have to know what the right hand is going to go wrong and you can look from kind of knowing what you're doing to uh, hitting a bunch of wrong strings. So I'm doing one pick on the third fret, another pick on the fourth fret, and sliding into the fifth. This is when that C7 shape goes down. So D7, I'm just telling you in simple terms, as I often do. To where my pinky is on the fifth fret on the third string. And my ring is on the fifth fret on the fifth string. My second finger is on the fourth string. My first finger is on the second string on the third fret. So I went on the fifth string more or less played the chord, alternating, now I'm on the thickest string. Now when I do an upstroke, I'm making sure to catch that note on the second string. So you need to be very confident with this chord shape because start doing an alternating bass you're still holding down these shapes that's the whole concept notice how the last one is just a down kind of abandon that down up sometimes after you do it See? it's more practical it, it, uh, makes the rhythm 
the more interesting.